In today's video, we are going to discuss whether certain sub-factions in Warhammer 40k should receive their own combat patrols, whether that is a box or just rules in a white dwarf, we'll discuss during the video. But in general, I thought that this was an interesting topic brought up by the community over and over again, you know, like once every two months or so it pops up on social media, and I thought we'd talk about it here. At the beginning of the year, in January, February and March, we received a new combo patrol with rules and all that good stuff in a white dwarf. And that sparked the debate whether certain sub-factions or certain other factions should get their own combo patrols or not, which ones should be eligible for, you know, any sub-factory representation and all that good stuff. And I think that's a really good discussion to have simply because we all thought that the White Dwarf would be there this year to feature all of this. So we, at the beginning of the year, at least expected that in every White Dwarf we would get a, you know, simple and easy combo patrol that is balanced against all the other more recent combo patrols, basically. And we thought that we'd get more representation, more variety, but that sadly apparently is not the case uh, because last month and now in uh, issue 500 we didn't get any combo patrols but rather boarding patrol rules which is not bad but a combo patrol is just more exciting to talk about to be completely honest and um, yeah let's talk about certain sub factions and how gw could tackle them in the future so first up it's important to have the discussion whether there should be boxes or just white dwarf rules and to be completely honest a realistic approach would be to just assume that all of these are going to be white dwarf rules because that's the realistic approach GW actually wants you to buy boxes separately, they increase the prices again, and so on. On the other hand, they have surprised me a little bit with how many value boxes they've released recently and that they just sprinkle battle forces everywhere across the year. I wouldn't call battle forces Christmas boxes anymore because they are not. Over the last two or three years, we've gotten battle forces all across the year, and it seems that they're more willing to do value boxes than I expected. Although, you know, they sold out immediately and they are single print runs. So there is a possibility that very few, very special certain factions or sub-factions, should I say, could get a combat patrol, but I just don't think it's going to happen. I think for some of them, it would be very beneficial, even though GW would, quote-unquote, lose a little bit of money uh, to get people into a faction. Like, for example, uh, Harlequins. Harlequins need a little bit more support, and even if their rules are great in a codex, or even if they are bad, the entire aesthetic and so on is its own thing, even though they kind of mesh it together with craft worlds. And I think to get people interested in the model range of Harlequin specifically, it requires a little bit more help, and a combat patrol could do that. Meanwhile, other more basic sub factions, like just another Necron Dynasty or something that has its own flavor, certainly, and its own lore, are capturing that in its entire box and getting a value box for that is just not necessary. I think that would have been ideally captured in a white dwarf, where GW could have, for example, given us a dynasty that is completely new and that completely kind of features uh, flayed ones, destroyer cult models and all the virus stuff. And that would have been a really cool box because it would have worked out for combat patrol so well. And that kind of stuff should be kind of supported going further from GW and for Spearhead as well for Age of Sigmar. It's just so easy for them to sit down, make cool rules and feature certain sub-factions and factions in combat patrol and get more people into the game and just, you know, have their sub factor represented. And that's a great thing. And I'm a little bit upset that they didn't do it over the kind of last two months. And I hope they are kind of rethinking that, kind of evaluating how popular they were, and then kind of moving forward with the idea that, you know, actually writing spearheads and combat patrols and putting them into a white dwarf might be very well worth it. Another thing that sparked this entire debate was that the Space Marines got their own combat patrol boxes for certain non codex compliant chapters like the Black Templars, Dark Angels, Space Wolves, and the Blood Angels. And it kind of asked the question, okay, can we do that for other factions as well? And the more popular ones that already have models could very easily do that. So for example, if we had a Death Core of Creek and a Combo Patrol for that, it would be technically possible. Yes, you would just have a Senate Demon Rust in there and so on, but you would also have Death Core of Creek Infantry in there and all that good stuff. And it would certainly work as its own box to get people into that specific aesthetic and flavor of the Imperial Guard. Now, making models from the ground up and so on, especially Imperial Guard players like to kind of daydream a lot about, you know, all the different sub-factions that the Imperial Guard has access to, Talon, um, and all the other stuff. It's not going to happen. That's just not realistic. But 
for stuff that we already have models for, why not? You know, Devkov Creek is out there. The kit is very popular. And people at times pre really prefer that aesthetic over the regular Cadian Shock troops. And I think that would be a great way to kind of get those players into the Imperial Guard without, you know, making too much fuss about it and just giving them a cool combo patrol to work with. Other bigger subfactions that already have model support would be, for example, the Inari from the Eldari. These guys already have the Incarn, they already have Yvrain and all that good stuff, and they could also feature these models in a combo patrol. Usually, we are not a big fan of named characters in a combo patrol box, but if it gets us more variety and so on, no one's going to start and complain. It would be a downside whenever I review this box if it ever were to appear. But overall, I'm, I would be first and foremost happy that we get more variety. So the Inari, uh, some of the regiments or some of the army subfactions from the Imperial Guard would make a lot of sense. And there are other bigger subfactions within the Orcs and uh, Sisters of Battle and all that good stuff. They could really use some support and rules just to diversify combo patrol a little bit because I think getting more combo patrols out there is very beneficial for the format, but also getting people into collecting a specific subset of miniatures or of models within their favorite faction. Another big elephant in the room that we need to talk about is that the Chaos Demons only have one box and it is 100% corn themed. Now, I personally prefer that one corn themed box over a box that is just Chaos Undivided, where you have Kind of demons from all the four different chaos gods because that is usually such a weird mix of models that people are just not very jazzed about buying them because nothing fits aesthetically too well and while i think that chaos demons that you know are undivided look really cool on a tabletop on a smaller scale where each kind of sub faction slanesh nurgle and so on have one single unit in the box and there's maybe one leader choice more for one of these four it just looks weird aesthetically. And I think going for a single god makes more sense. But we, sh we could probably still get rules for all the different other boxes. I think that Chaos Demon specifically should technically have the option to get a box for every kind of major Chaos God and have a Chaos Demon's box that fits that specific god simply because it makes collecting the army easier. And it's exactly what we had with start collecting. So it's not impossible. And, you know, Space Marines also a good indicator that it is also possible. Yes, it would make collecting Chaos Demons very, very cheap, and we need to consider that Chaos Demons are not only available or playable in Warhammer 40k, but I think that you can use the exact same models in Horus Heresy. I'm not 100% sure if that's accurate. But you could definitely use all the different models from these combo patrols in Age of Sigmar, for example, or maybe in the future in Warhammer the Old World, and that would make things very, very cheap, very, very easily accessible. And I think that GW is scared of offering too much value for too little in return. And that's why they are kind of weirdly weird about this. So the corn box is only there simply because GW is scared that if they put out four combo patrols, they're going to offer too much value. And if someone were to play Chaos Undivided in Chaos Demons, and they were to just go out there, buy eight combo patrols, which is a lot of money for GW, by the way, they would have an entire army for three or four different systems and they could call it a day at that point. But are we honestly kind of complaining if someone could just go out and buy eight combo patrols? At that point, I think GW would be very happy and they would still need to buy separate models. And that is the cool thing about Chaos Demons. All GW would do at that point is incentivize a Chaos Demons player to start with a lot of kind of infantry and smaller stuff because that's what combo patrols usually feature. And then they would still need to go out and buy a Shalaxi or a Keep of Secrets, a Bloodthirster, and so on. And those models are very expensive on their own. And GW would make even more money. So, I don't know. Maybe they have some suits or some people with calculators uh, there that kind of decided that it wouldn't financially make sense to offer this much value for a certain or single faction. But I think just thinking about it, I, I don't think they would lose a ton of money on offering a combat patrol for each of the different Chaos Gods and making Chaos Demons more accessible and more fun to play and more fun to collect, frankly, um, as it already is. So, and then uh, obviously we would also get combat patrol rules and more diversify that kind of stuff. And last but not least, I think that they should use the current combat patrol to also be featured in Spearhead and get rules there. It could just, I don't know, make you pick certain models if there are too many of them in there or something. And the same could apply to future Chaos Demons combo patrols. They could just also feature them 
in Spearhead. And that way, everyone is happy. Everyone has all their options, everyone gets their stuff, and GW gets people into a faction that really requires you to invest into big 100 pound, uh, 100 and what, 40 or 50 dollar or 60 maybe even dollar models that you need on top of all of these combat patrols to really play Chaos Nine Divided and have fun with your army. So overall, Chaos Demons, they kind of need a combat patrol, in my opinion, for every sub faction and not just White Dwarf rules, but an actual box. Also, while we are talking about sub factions, it's funny that we recently got an or combo patrol box that is a sub faction, the Beast Snaggers. And I don't mind like that box at all. I think it's a great starting box. If you like the aesthetic, go for it. But what is a little bit annoying is that this is the only option that you have from this point moving forward. So they gave you the option for a sub faction, and that's really nice. The rules are okay, you know, they're a little bit here or there. But the problem with this I have is that the regular basic one, if you prefer that aesthetic, is just gone. The rules are still there. You were going to be able to use them for the next two or three years, but the box itself is gone. And that is something that I think sucks. So if you're going to offer SGW sub faction boxes, you should really consider kind of giving people the vanilla flavor of a faction still, not just taking it away. I know why they did it with the orcs, because they did it with every faction. The new Beast Snagger box obviously replaced the old box. And that is what happened with every army that received their codex and obviously also their combat patrol. So they just replaced the old box and went with the new. It just happened to be Beast Snagger themed, which is fine. But I think that in this specific case, I think if they want to offer specific sub factions, they should definitely consider also giving us a vanilla flavored box, even if the value for that box is not that great or if it's just worse. I would really take a combo patrol that is a little bit less value in that case and have it a cool and easy way to get people into a faction, even though they might not like B Snagger Boys, for example. So what is the specific conclusion for this? I think first up is that just a few, very few select factions, mostly Chaos Demons and maybe Death Golf Creek and some very, very prominent sub-factions should get a box, a dedicated box that offers a little bit of value and gets people into those specific sub-factions, Harlequins and so on. They already have models. GW doesn't need to expend a lot of work on them. All they need to do is offer some rules and put them all in a box and sell them and make money. For those, it makes sense. For most of the other factions, like if you, for example, want a specific Scion detachment for uh, the Imperial Guard, or if you want to have Catrishans, or if you want to have a different Space Marine chapter or Chaos Space Marine chapter, which is, I don't know, Night Lord specific and so on. I don't think expecting a box for these is going to be realistic, even though, for example, the Night Lords also have models with the new Kill Team box. I just think that those factions would at most receive a White Dwarf combo patrol, and that's absolutely fine. But the most vital factions, like, as I said, uh, Harlequins come to mind, Death Cove Creek, and the other three Chaos Demons, um, would offer a box, and those would offer a benefit to not only GW, but also the consumer, and would make it a lot of fun to collect these boxes, and to play these factions, and to actually have an option to have all the different Chaos Gods represented, not only in combo patrol, but, you know, on the table in general, because you can get them for a great price. But it would also make it easier to just collect these factions. And then, you know, for the other obscure sub-factions, just offer one list in Combat Patrol. I know, you know, that's an easy way to fill pages, and GW could even do it with Spearhead as well. So they could just include a Spearhead list and a Combat Patrol list in every White Dwarf, and I guarantee you those magazines would be even more popular than they are already. So having rules in there, writing rules is fun on its own, you know, whoever writes those combo Patrol rules in specific, it's just a fun job to do. And if you balance them a little bit, and if you test them at least in like five to 10 games, you're going to have a great list that makes a ton of fun to play that is balanced against all the other stuff we've gotten recently, which is definitely a little bit powered down, but it's still fun to play combo Patrol with them. And another thing to think about is definitely that GW's production pipeline seems to be very stretched. We've seen that with certain boxes, they've done very well. Like, for example, Kill Team Nightmare. Kill Team Nightmare was, was around for a few hours at least. So it is better than nothing, even though the box was highly popular. But with the very recent Chaos Space Marine Battle Forces, those boxes sold out literally within seconds. We're talking within 45 to 50 seconds. They were gone, at least on the German stores. And it was impressive to see, which basically means that all of those stores had like 20 boxes of each Battle Force max. So it seems that GW has warehouse things that they are doing. They have 
kind of they're updating their entire production process and all that good stuff, which is fine. But as it stands, you know, adding a ton more combo patrols to their production pipeline, I don't know whether that's going to be more work for them, more stress for the entire kind of management and logistics, but I would assume so. So um, putting even more strain on that, especially that we are getting a big launch box every year now, um, we are basically rotating through systems and so on, is just a lot of stuff to consider. And I think it wouldn't be realistic to expect like, you know, 20 new combo patrols, even though it would be very cool. So I think at least for the Chaos Demons and for two or three other sub factions, it would make sense to make a dedicated box. For the rest, DW, please just go out of your way, include combo patrol rules in the White Dwarf, in every White Dwarf, and make it easy for yourself to just, you know, fill like 10 pages in every White Dwarf with something that people really appreciate, that people would definitely try out if they are interested in casual Warhammer, and it would be just a fun thing to write as well. So overall, I think the combo patrol is a win-win format. I think everyone who appreciates just getting into the game for very, very cheap, at least for GW standards, and with a simplified rule set, um, would make use of all of this. Like the Chaos uh, Demon boxes we talked about, or just White Dwarf Combo Patrol rules, and I think everyone would be happy at the end of the day. And if GW really wanted to go out of their way, they would add, as I said, a Combo Patrol list, as well as a Spearhead list moving forward, once 4th edition Age of Sigma drops, and that way, you know, you have a ton of cool rules within a White Dwarf every month, and it would be enough reason for me to kind of subscribe to the White Dwarf, to be completely honest. Obviously, I would cover them on the channel, but I think a lot of people really appreciate Combo Patrol. It's a more niche game, obviously. We are covering it here on the channel, and I know that not everyone appreciates Combo Patrol, especially the more competitive-minded people really like the 2,000 points games. But if you are there to broaden your horizons, if you are a competitive person and you would kind of like to play a shorter game, which is kind of the entire selling point of Combo Patrol, because a Combo Patrol game, if you are a professional or if you are a competitive person, is going to literally take you 45 minutes. And it's such a great palette cleanser. And I think if you have more options, and I think if you are GW and offer more options, people are going to give it a try, inevitably at some point, because they are going to look at Combo Patrol or hear about a White Dwarf, and hear that, you know, Catachans are getting their own combo patrol rules, or their own box even. Or Night Lords get their own combo patrol rules. And those people are going to feel represented. They're going to want to kind of support their own sub-faction and just give it a try because it's fun. And that's one way GW could look at this entire thing. So, if there are certain sub-factions that you think should get a combo patrol or just rules in a white dwarf, specify which of these you think are realistic. And just let me know which sub-factions you would really like to see represented in combo patrol. As I said, either as a box or with rules. And um, yeah, just let me know what you think. If I skipped over any kind of, of the major uh, sub factions that we should talk about here and all that good stuff. And with that, I hope this video was insightful. I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.